don't need your hands dirty. Then you, you, the learning does not stick. What do you need? What are three things you need to make learning stick? It's recurrence, which is basically you have to repeat things and regular intervals. It's recursion, which is basically think deeply about it. And reciprocation, which is having a dialogue about a distinction in the back and forth. So that's how learning sticks. Now if you think about it, you take a book, and now you think about what will you get in the book, you will get some information. If you read a little bit more and almost reflect on it, you will get some insight. But how will you know whether that insight will work or not? You will, you will learn it only if you implement it. And then you will get some feedback, and then you will get some uh, uh, rewards. Like, right? So how many projects will you have that will make sure that every insight that is coming your way can be implemented in your own projects? Almost impossible to have like 100 different projects because you get insight from marketing, use all those things. But let's say you are helping people. You will have, if you are helping 100 people, you can just get really good at looking at the patterns, looking at bringing the insight into a context and actually seeing it work. All of a sudden, you become a, you, that becomes your superpower, which is basically you know exactly what to do, what insight works in which context and how, how you implement it because you know which people, who will come and implement it better. So it's like a snap of a finger. For other people, it looks like magic. For you, it's like common sense. It's rocket science for others, common sense for you. But if somebody is wanting to have a business case, there is no need because like we said, you know, it's universe is the ultimate um, uh, record keeper. So you do good and you reap uh, good. So if you um, if you just uh, don't do enough good things, then why do you even expect anything good to come back? That's how I think. All right. Uh, anybody else have a question or a challenge to pose to Rajesh and he'll get you a solution? Yeah. Uh, I think it was Priyanka and Renee, right? So Priyanka, you're next. Thank you. So Hi, Zane. Thank you. Uh, is it okay if I go ahead? Yes, Priyanka, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, guys. Uh, this has been such an inspiring space. I've been making uh, every two page full of notes here. And uh, uh, I have to thank Zane for emphasizing on the mind of Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh, you, you teach us that, you know, with compassion and love is the only way to go ahead uh, and, you know, just encapsulate the world uh, with wisdom. So just a uh, complimentary thought on those lines working in the education space and you know believing that education is the foremost tool to bring um, so social peace and justice in the current ecosystem that we're living in uh, but when you hear stories about um, you know our uh, our, neighbor, our neighboring countries when you hear that a dad in Afghanistan is selling his daughter in order to buy food it just shatters your soul so much that then you feel what is the point of making a dent in the universe with whatever you have. Of course, there are days like that. Of course, we are humans. We feel like we feel the pain and we're like, why are we even going ahead? So what advice do you give in those times, you know, when you do not have um, control on these external forces? How does one then um, try to bring themselves up from that um, abyss and try to make an impact on the world. This very much aligns with the thought of uh, the missed opportunity that you very brilliantly highlighted in your article where one needs to proactively come and help their network. And it doesn't matter, the, the, the globe is your network. We, are, we shouldn't be bound by borders. So how do we then make an impact with whatever skills and capacity that we have? Thank you again for the space and for some brilliant gems that you've been putting out. And, uh, Lots of love to Zane here for emphasizing on the session so much. Thank you, and Priyanka, I'm complete for the moment. Thank you, Priyanka, for uh, uh, first of all asking the question and also uh, remembering the article. It's a real missed opportunity article. It means you you made my day. Anything more is a bonus. So you see how easy it is for me to get anxiety. So. Uh, one thing that I want to tell you is, uh, uh, I was a journalist before, right? I wrote like, several, almost close to uh, 100 articles, and then uh, I have 2,000 blog posts. Uh, but uh, the la 
last time I watched news or read a newspaper was in 1997. I really don't know what's happening in depth because I get all the news from whatever you say. This said, now that's a news. I got it. But I don't proactively read news because I have a simple rule that most of the news is an exception if you think about it. So otherwise, it won't get into the news. Simple logic, isn't it? Because if it has to be an exception, it's not a rule. So you cannot make rules based on exceptions. But I was the journalist. I know where is the drama? Where is the intrigue? What happens? How do you rail up emotions? As being, I wrote all this thing. I was part of the crime that I was committing. Now I know how I should not get sucked in. I am not in, in any way uh, lessening the pain that the, uh, that you you have when you read something like that in what is happening in Afghanistan. But there is also a capacity that you have. If anybody robs your capacity, it's an opportunity cost because in the same time that we are going through this, um, uh, is this happening in this world? That time will never come back because you could also do something that is in your control, little bit in your control of making your world, world around you a better place. That's how I think about it. So when somebody sends me an article and says, you take a look, and mostly I don't even click it. I ask the, call them back and say, why am I clicking on this? They'll say, I thought it will be interesting. I ask them for whom and why. So people will get upset when I, I do all those things, but right? because for me, input is very important because I have very limited, so for all the people there, 24 hours, I have 18 because of my, whatever I'm going through. So I'm very, very careful about what I will input. So I will never input, like I always think the thoughts are like paying guests. So some thoughts, you pay them. Some thoughts, they pay you. So if there's a thought I have to pay, I'm very careful because wow. it's, a, it's free space. No, it's my space, but it, it, it feels like I'm using it for, hey, hey come and occupy my head space, whoever you want. So I block the thoughts at their entrance. So if I don't read news, I don't have to process many things. So half the problems are solved. So next is all the things that I'm thinking about are things where I can do some little bit of an influence Remember, it has to be easy for me, but valuable for the other thing. So, it's all the disturbing thoughts. Once you know, you cannot stop it unless you are a big yogi or something. But you could have a dialogue with them. So, some crazy thought is coming to you. Can you say, hey, what do you want from me? I will say, I just want to mess with your other thoughts. No, no, no. I'm very important. The neighborhood in my headspace is very important to me. I want that you mess with me. You can come and visit. You can just take a peek or uh, there is a uh, railing around it. You, you can take it, look, peek, and that's about it. You can leave. So you cannot say, oh, don't come near the gate. They will come. Because there are so many people, social media and everything, they're always thinking, let me get some headspace, let me get some headspace. You can say, guys, this is my space. You can have a look, but that's all you can get. Bye. How does that sound? Sounds liberating. Thank you. Rajesh, uh, that is so incredible. That is such an incredible. So, you know, we I've applied something similar in business where we get two or three opportunities, two or three time in a day, and we look at what will bring value and what will not bring value. And then you just, but to think, to think at this stage that any thought that comes into your mind, you control that, you control the thought and say, is this going to pay me or am, is it going to cost me or is I'm, I'm going to earn something with this? Wow. Incredible, incredible um, uh, gems there. Renee, go ahead. Thank you so very much. This room is just thriving with incredible vibrations. And I feel so about actions that most of us on the stage today, we're always looking for ways to add something bigger than ourselves to empower as well as to add value to the human race. Roger, your grace, wisdom, and humility of living in the now is so admirable. Thank you for moving us to another level of appreciation for life this morning. Much gratitude, Zane, for you providing a space for giving us the opportunity to learn more about him. He is so refreshing. I mean, he gives me new meaning to two words, service 
and significance from the very second he spoke, the minute, even going into the hour. So my question is, what are you planning while preparing for your next chapters of your journey in life that will improve quality for our future game changers, the younger generation? How are you pouring into them? And I want you to know this, Roger, you are a phenomenal person. Yes, you are. I'm complete for now. That was so awesome. I'm in the bonus territory, Renee. I'm, uh, the joy is joy jar is already over in school and uh, it's seeping into the next week. But I'm just carrying all the joy and collecting it. So if, if ever I need, I just come to the joy bank of this room and just withdraw it. So thank you for that. So uh, now you asked a question, what am I planning? I, I usually plan nothing. Because I sometimes people say, you know, wait, how do you find your opportunities? I'm always thinking the vibrations is are right, then the opportunities will find me in the form of somebody who is coming and saying, This is what I'm thinking. So I don't have to even think about it. And uh, like it just happens. It's almost like I always think I'm at the right place at the right time with the right people. How it happens, God only knows. I wish I could take credit for it, but it's just impossible for me to do that because there's so many things even for this room to have. Unless Zain said, you know, I usually rarely do anything for on myself. And Zain said, no, this has to happen. And all the people that Zain invited, all of you are just amazing people. So uh, can I take credit for any one of this? No. 99% of it is Zain and all of you. So I just come and show up and then I'm always thinking, what are the possibilities that I can create? I, was I just speaking. want to say that uh, um, Rajesh says he's uh, not doing much, but let me just give you an example of how he's helping the next gen. Um, you know, one of our, you know, there's someone we brought to uh, US, Shamal Balaji, who um, and Zane was talking earlier about he's somebody who coached the best tennis pros and all that stuff. And when you start a new journey in the US, it's it's very different, right? The first person I introduced Shamal to is Rajesh. And pretty much his entire journey is figured out, you know? So I just want to say that, uh, Rajesh, you are helping the next gen without even acknowledging it, without even knowing it. For someone even as famous as Shamal to come here and start a journey would have been tough, but for meeting you. And now his journey has been cut short by at least five years, you know, of struggle. Uh, so I just want to say, because Renee, you are asking about how does he help the next gen. This is how he helps the next gen and he doesn't even know he's doing it. I'm sorry, I'm in a car, so there's a bit of a sound and uh, Shamal is here with me, so he'll say something also. Yeah, thank you, Lakshmi. Uh, Zain, firstly, thank you so much for doing this. And, and, and Rajesh, you know, I woke up at 7 and I was listening and there were a few times I wanted to put my hand up or jump on, but I was just too emotional because to look at the amount of impact that you've made in so many people's lives uh, is just absolutely remarkable. And... Um, I know I keep, you know, I, I, I want to just say, you know, I, I tell people in, when we look at emotions, there are three different layers, you know, first an emotion is very temporary and then an emotion becomes a mood and it lasts a little longer. And then if we're lucky enough, that emotion becomes a part of your personality and it shines through irrespective of any circumstances. And it's very rare to meet any one person with any one emotion that shines through in every situation, good, bad, ugly. And you are the one soul who is really, I think you're the guardian angel for more than for millions of people. And that attitude of gratitude and giving just shines through and uh, I'm blessed. You know, the, the bonus section for all of us began a long time ago. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Shamal. Thank you, uh, uh, Lakshmi. And so everybody in the room, let me tell you something about the art of giving that uh, Rajesh did yesterday. I was in the middle of a very, very busy day, Friday, since I'm flying to New York uh, tonight. And then I don't come back into San Jose after uh, Silicon Valley back for about another 10 days. And I just came back 
two days ago from Hawaii after a 10 day vacation celebrating my 42nd anniversary with my wife. So really I had only one day Friday to work and I get a call from Rajesh and he says, there are two people you want to, you should meet, which is Lakshmi who just spoke and Shamil, yeah, both that I would actually put down on a calendar and hope that someday I could meet them. I mean, you know, these are people that you couldn't even get a touch off with a, with a pole and a ladder uh, with, with, Billion dollar companies and they couldn't get reach uh, a hold of them, right? He calls you. I didn't know who they were. He didn't tell me. He just said, Zane, can you do lunch with them and meet them? And that's all he said. I drove out of my car. I told my daughter we were on a conference call. I said, I'll go on a conference call. If Rajesh wants me to meet, he probably wants me to meet them to help them because I'll do, not knowing that it's something good for me, that I'm meeting such great individuals. That is the way he gives. That is what he does constantly. What does he get in return? Zane has a busy day, has no time at all, will not say no to him ever. And he didn't do it for his benefit. He just did it for my benefit. And I got to meet two of these incredible humans. Imagine you all, everybody in the room that knows me, I'm a huge cricket fan. Would I ever think that I'll, know, I'll meet the person and not that my son-in-law is here you know, who would also get inspired because uh, Shamil is also coaching Ralph, uh, and, and, uh, uh, the tennis player, right? And Nadal. Nadal. But, but to meet somebody who coached the Indian cricket team when they went to the World Cup final. Wow. What an inspiration. That I would meet him in person, have lunch with them on a one-on-one. Lakshmi was a TEDx who took TEDx and doing so much good for women and companies in India. What an inspiration. This is what Rajesh does constantly to the generations next to the next generation. He's constantly doing this. And he, he said he has only 18 hours in a day because of what he's suffering from right now. I mean, not suffering, but because of uh, his challenges with Parkinson, right? Yet he pours his giving, pours his giving. It's a lesson that I've learned from him over the, you know, such a pleasure that I've known him from 1999. And having met with him at least once a month since then, always, um, it's just incredible, Rajesh, what you're doing for the next generation. May the world be better by giving and constantly, everybody in this room, just give, give, and give. I'm, I'm sorry I took so much time. I apologize. I, uh, sorry, Lakshmi and Sharmal, if I mentioned you without asking you your name. Uh, no, no, not at all. It's, I just wanted to add just that thing. All Rajesh says in one life, he tells me, Lakshmi, Zane is a master at thinking about marketing and all. You got to be, that's it. So all I'm saying is that when there are people in your life who give like that, grab every minute of it. Uh, like Ravi said earlier, sometimes we wonder, what is their ulterior motive? This is just too good to be true. But there are times in your life things are too good to be true and we should embrace them completely. So Zane, I really want to thank you for doing this because... One of the things I was telling Rajesh yesterday is that you help everyone. Why are you on a platform? He never, never likes to talk publicly that much. And I think Zane, myself, uh, Shamal, and everyone are on a secret mission. It's not so secret anymore to make sure the world knows Rajesh. And, you know, that's our mission. So if I have one request for everyone here. Yeah. Just tell 10 people about Rajesh and make sure you buy his books. He's phenomenal. And Zane, you are really, I mean, we are all, we are all a tribe. We are all a tribe now. And let's all put our heads together to make sure the world doesn't miss Rajesh Shetty. Uh, he's a brilliant person. It's our job to share him with everybody. Now, I've been very greedy so far, even myself and my friends, but now it's our turn to make the world know who he is. And his philosophy, Rajesh's philosophy should be out uh, in the out in the open, should be codified and shared across so that there are more Rajesh Shetty's who can be inspired and the philosophy just grows and makes the world a better place. 100% agree. 100% agree. And I will add one more thing. Rajesh, you were going to say something and I never interrupt you, but I will at this time. Lakshmi, you and I have to do this because fate made you meet me yesterday on a Friday and I'm a Muslim and I go for Friday prayers. I skip that to meet with you. So that is a calling that we have to. Uh, Rajesh, by the way, for those people that don't know, 
is a saint in many, many ways. He's a saint. And I'm not talking about Simon Templar with the saint single for those in the 80s and 60s and 70s. I'm talking about a real saint. Uh, let's explode him to the world. Everybody below, please add the plus sign and call your best friends to come in in this room. Rajesh, the floor is yours again. And some uh, floor is yours. And I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, Rajesh. Forgive me, please. First of all, you, you never embarrass me. And for me, as you know, everything is, is uh, like uh, if the joy jar is filling so much, I have to change the joy jar to, it is now a reserve wine. I can just press a button and get joy on demand. That's the gift you all have given me. Uh, Lakshmi, you are in the car that's moving. So that was a moving conversation. That's all I look at. So uh, I cannot thank all of you enough. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, um, you are always thinking. So the, the thing that it does not occur to me is that uh, some one day one of my friends did a mistake. And then I told him, that's a mistake, we should not do it. And then I said, okay, because I know him, he's like my brother, and I have to tell him. And the next day he called me and he said, he apologized. I said, hey, that is over. I, the moment I said it's a mistake, you agreed and you said what you were going to do. I don't remember it. Why are you bringing it back? Because for me, every thought, like I said, it is like a paying guest. Either we are paying or uh, the thought is paying us. I also know that it is energy. So uh, the thing about it is, uh, once I showed him what, what was happening, I'm done with it. It's a bad energy. It's not the greatest energy there. It's not easy for somebody to say made a mistake. But the energy should not be there in this headspace. So when he called me, I said, please don't do it again. But I won't remember it. Now I'm bringing it back into my memory. So that clean, uh, keeping it clean is extremely important. And there's no need to carry the baggage. That's why for me, I, like I said, I'm in cloud nine or cloud 10. Why? Because there are only possibilities. So there is nothing to think about. And you know, sometimes, you know, there are people who will take advantage of what they're giving. So what? It's, they cannot take advantage on a subscription basis. Like once they'll take advantage of you, and how will they say, hey, you, I took advantage of you once. You know, I'm doing, trying to do this on a subscription, monthly subscription basis. Are you available? No, it will not. It will be silly for them to do it, isn't it? And what do you do for them? You just push them well. And my teacher taught me one thing. If you're really that powerful, you not being there in your life becomes a complicated disadvantage for them. If you're not that powerful, just become that powerful. So focus on yourself. When I say power, it's not a power kind of a dictatorial kind of power. Power is the capacity to make good things happen. So that's all. Uh, that's all the philosophical uh, definition is. So all of us need capacity, and you can lend your capacity so that they make good things happen, and you improve yourself so that you increase your capacity to make good things happen. Some people take advantage of you. Should wish them well. That's that's something I want to try. Kunal, you, you wanted to say something. I think you had unmuted. I just wanted to second everything uh, Lakshmi said. And in Rajesh, we've talked about this a lot because, you know, I pride myself on following in your footsteps as a giver myself. And uh, I think the most important thing is to make sure that you don't let people take advantage of you. And that's something I've got better and better at thanks to your uh, mentorship and guidance. And I think that's something that comes in very often with life, where you're a giver by nature. A lot of takers will surround you because they know they can get a lot from you because you're not going to ask um, for anything in return, which is something like a very rare quality and trait, character trait that I actually an attribute that I find so fascinating and so amazing about you, Rajesh. So for me, my question would be, you know, we live in a transactional world, right? And as givers, we have to be careful of our energy. But it's also important to take um, in a way that allows it for it to be a win-win, a ideally. Um, how, how do you go about in your life when you see, you know, subscribers coming in 
how do you make that a win-win for you? How do you upside that to a positive versus negative? That's a great question, Kuna. See, first of all, there are many ways. Now we are coming into some tactics. Right? So basically, one of the tactics I use some is called a welcome hurdle. So welcome hurdle is the name I gave it myself. It's just because there was no term for it. So when somebody says, you know, I've written 80 books, I've actually written about 30 books, I've not published the other 12. Because if I start, because I write every day, at least one page, and I've done it since I was 10 years old. So I have a bunch of stuff written but not published. Why I don't publish is because you know, I am also running business startups and if I just keep publishing, people will think, what is this guy? It's no other work. When will they take care of our companies? Right? So I just keep it there. One day I'll just publish them. So but the question coming to the question is how do you make sure that you put a break for somebody who is not deserving to demand something from you? There are many ways. One of the ways is the welcome part. What is a welcome hurdle? So somebody says, um, you know, hey, I want to write a book. Can I come and discuss with you? Let's say you never, he has never written even a blog post. And then you want to write a book. Now there is some some question. So I always say, what is the book about? And then he says, he or she says something. So if I ever feel that they are not ready for the conversation, so I always, uh, I have a book proposal template and I can send it to them. And I, there is a there is a talk that I have given about how to write a book fast. So, and also I wrote a book in 11 hours, 19 minutes. It's called Writing Zero on how to write a book fast. I send all of it to them and including the recording of the talk that I gave to Indian Professional Speakers Association, which completely in detail does it. Then I said, as an outcome of this, I've given you everything. Why don't you fill this 18-page book proposal template? It will make you become better. Then we can meet. What happens? 99 out of 100 people never come back. But they always feel, oh, wow, there is so much information given. And the one person who does come back, he actually deserves the meeting. So then he will get the meeting and it will be fun. What do you think? I, I fully agree. I think, you know, given that I've just embarked on my PhD, <laughs> that's a great way for me also to uh, spend my inbox and time. So thank you for that. I actually love that. I want to input something. Will everybody just hit Roger Shetty's face and like him, follow him? Please, everybody do that as a favor to me. You know, I've got 10,000 followers. I want all of them to hit and like him. It is a the requirement. He's awesome. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, go ahead. Who was that uh, who wanted to say? Uh, this, is, uh, this is Fires. Uh, Fires. Thank you, Zain. First of all, thank you for uh, notifying me about this room. And, and, you know, this is an amazing room. And, and meeting Rajesh is one of the best things that has happened to me now. I mean, I'm, it's going to be on top of the list of the best things that has hap happened to me. Uh, thank you again, uh, Zain. And Rajesh, I was just going through your bio. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I had, it was my misfortune that I did not know you uh, before today. So see, see how backward I am in my <laughs> up-to-date news. So uh, Rajesh, I just want you to uh, chime in on the, the right hustle program that you do so that uh, we can see if we can participate in that and uh, enrich ourselves. Thank you, Rajesh. That is, those are kind words by us. So I'll talk about that concept, how to leave an ultimate lasting impression. First, um, I, I, I know this is not the specific question, but this will get to set the stage for something else. So, so everybody wants to leave a lasting impression. So now how do you do it? So it's by being valuable, to by giving valuable. How do you know that it's valuable? How do we make sure that it's not a like a cop out thing where we say we give some help and say I'm so I give them so valuable. There's no metric, isn't it? There's no scale, there's no yardstick that will say this was valuable, this was this was not so valuable. How do we break that cycle? So I came up with a proxies for it. For example, if I ask all of you, do you remember all your teachers from kindergarten until now? Most of them, most of you, almost all of you may say, no, I don't remember every single one of them. But I didn't say none of you. Why? Because there will be some people, there is one person. So one, one girl I met, she said, I, I remember every one of them. I said, no, that's impossible. And it is possible. 
And I was thinking, she was just playing a game with me, right? So I said, do you really remember? And she said, yes, she has shared it in Evernote from kindergarten to every single teacher. How did that happen? She said, from, from her very young age, they, they taught her three things in Sanskrit. It's Matra Deva Bhava, Pitra Deva Bhava, Acharya Deva Bhava. It was uh, your parents, Matra and Pitra, is mom and dad are your gods and the teacher is also like God. You have to always remember and be grateful. Except for that one person. I have not heard anyone who's remembered every single teacher. So I asked people, do you remember some of them? And usually people say, yeah, yeah, some of them. Without even they mentioning anything, I say those two, those some of them will fall into one of the two categories. One of the two, what is the one ca- first category is they were very bad. They were so bad that you were like shocked that they were your teachers and they were like laughing stock kind of thing. But the other, they were so good that you cannot forget them. And one or two of them, they were really, really, really so good that you almost attribute and credit them for who have who you have become today. Then what happens? You start missing them in your past. This person was so phenomenal that why didn't I not meet them in the past? Because my life would have been even better. Only then you are given valuable help. If the help is so valuable, you miss them in your past. That's the metric. Because otherwise, how else will you do it? They start in kgs, meters or centimeters or some um, gallons or something. It has to be something. There has to be a proxy. Can you give that kind of help? It is so valuable that you cannot stop the other person say, I wish I met this person. That's, a, that's easy. If you are extremely thoughtful and you are always opening the words that they could not have seen unless you bring them forth those words with your words. It's the power of linguistic philosophy. If I can open a world for you and that you are and you cannot unsee it, then magic happens. Now, it comes to the right hassle. I wrote that uh, uh, course mainly because people used to say there's a common word that hustle has become like a love-hate word. People will say, for starting a company, you have to hustle and get things done. What is the underlying meaning of it? Underlying meaning is you search for people who will give something, collect it, collect it, collect it, then you have got the hustle. But the right hustle is you search for people that are making a difference and give, 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 so that you can amplify what they are doing. So the whole program is about how you can search and give. Like, how do you go and look for people to give? That's the uh, entire premise of this program. And I answer all the questions. Like, how do you make sure that you don't get uh, run out of gas, those kinds of things along the way? And how you are also growing while you are giving? I hope that's helpful. Sir, I'm saying this is Sarah. I have a question. Sure. Uh, uh, Yeah, go ahead, Sarah, please. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Raj. And again, forgive me if I didn't know before, but thank you so much, Zay, for introducing that mindset to us and helping us to know a name that, for sure, I have followed and will check on his writings. Uh, Rajesh, um, coming from the collective uh, society teacher from the Middle East, and as you know, there are so many attributes here um, that where somehow barriers for me being a professional businesswoman, owner of two organizations, uh, having 15 years of professional experience, but having hard time um, articulating the monetary asks for doing my business. So in my field, I'm well known for being the magnet connector. So if any organization in my field like needs connections or they need to market their event or have me as a keynote speaker, I go. Okay, and um, I promote them and I get them access to connections and attendees, etc. etc. and even to speakers. When I started articulating this language after many many years of giving, okay, because that's my nature, I'm just making it healthier. So, when I started putting that into a monetary value, which is absolutely, but I'm so busy and right now I'm trying to make more income from my organizations and revenue, da 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 da, uh, my consultation fee is 
this. Yes, I can help you with editing the bio, but I do this for money. And you have seen um, testimonials about the time of putting the value of adding, and I'm doing this for this amount. Here, I find that um, mostly, like the majority or the percentage of organizations or individuals want to take things for free. Okay, and I don't mind that kind of mindset, but I find myself very nervous when 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 I'm trying to be diplomatic in return in like, you know, not telling them, hey, why, why are so cheap? I'm so sorry to say that, but, you know, I'm coming from a painful. Um, Sarah, uh, yeah. can you can you please make your question oh, yeah. quick and short? Yeah. Because there are lots of people Absolutely. in the room yeah, and we so want sorry. to respect everybody's I'm time. Explaining. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. So, um, Rajesh, how can I be extremely professional when I identify someone who is just like making use of me or my skills or my, you know, connections without being uh, rude or without being nervous while I'm, you know, talking to them professionally. Thank you so much again. Sarah, that's a really good question and extremely practical one. And our givers always face this problem, right? So let me share a, a distinction and then I'll also answer the question uh, specifically and also in general so that everybody else who has the question also benefit from it. First is the concept of zeroth impression. What is a zeroth impression? Everybody talks about having a good first impression. That means you know, when you meet somebody first time, have a good first impression, that means they feel valuable and all those things. But those the first impression is really important for 15, 20 years ago when there was no internet and those kinds of things because you may not know enough about the person. So nowadays, the more important than the first impression is the zero thing. Like even before they meet, I'm sure some people have Googled my name and all those things. The first few minutes, for people who didn't know me, they will be judging and just validate. It looks like an interesting person, but is it really that interesting? So that goes on. I'm, I'm not saying it's, I'm not judging you back for judging me, but that's the way it works. Right? We're all human beings. Because the zeroth impression we're trying to see is it, does it match the zeroth impression or is it just a marketing speak and all those things? Sarah, one of the things that is happening is the zeroth impression that you have had because you have been a giver and not asked for any money. So people think, I think she has enough money. She is doing it like charitable service. Now suddenly you ask people, you think, what? How come she was so nice? Now suddenly she wants money. She has become greedy. How is this happening? Right? The first step is to fix the zeroth impression, isn't it? So even when you give for free, you can, so as there are many things that I can say, but let's start here. Even when you're giving things for free, you have to say that what would you have chance to if you didn't give it for free? Because people cannot read your mind, isn't it? Basically, they cannot. In fact, people don't think of, if you don't ask, they cannot say, oh, well, maybe she also needs money for cash flow issues. And she also needs to grow. I should give her. There are a few people who do. Like Zain is one of them. But there are only few Zains. So, which means that most other people will think, if you don't ask, they're not going to practically say, here is the money Second thing you can do is you can also have a professional website where it's clearly it's your services. Then you can say some of it is pro bono depending on those organizations needs and all those things. What cannot happen is you continue to operate and with the same zeroth impression, but expect a sudden change in the people's behavior because you you think that they should start. They won't because that's the way they have been programmed to for a long time. Now suddenly you're making a change, they will think you have changed. You have become sort of you know, money-minded and those kinds of things. Third is you can also ask other person like a manager to represent you and just the person will say, hey, she does this for 10% of the time, 90% of the time. So uh, do you have the budget and all those things? It's business. So hope some of those things were helpful. Absolutely. Thank you so much again. Uh, hey, first of all, thanks for this invite. Hey, Rajesh, this is Ranjit. Rajesh is my, uh, to everyone to know, Rajesh is my dear friend. And uh, just want to take one word to say, Rajesh is like, you know, uh, he's a powerful force of ideas. And uh, always like, whenever I talk to him, 
the kind of inspiration spills me whole that week hey thank you rajesh for really inspiring every time and all of us and uh, really keep doing the way what you're doing one question which i just want to ask uh, and also it might benefit with all of you one thing which always surprised me how are you so consistent yeah that I, that really that really makes me because you know uh, you have highs downs and sometimes you know you have a lot of things and how do you prioritize this is something i always want to know because you know you do a lot of puzzles you're so passionate and you talk to people you take time for networking you attend events you give your talks you give a lot of stuff right the thing is basically right you know uh what makes me really interesting is you know how does rajesh shetty prioritize things you know is it like you know you have a time table can you tell me your day how do you plan general day in your life Yeah, that's sure. a very good question. First of all, thank you so much for your kind words. And all the people here, I can talk about Ranjit for like half a day about the kind of programs he does, the events, the moments that he creates. So all of you, please also follow him. And all the people here, please follow each other. So the thing about this is about consistency. Is it comes to uh, people talk about habits. No? So when uh, people say it's difficult to form a new habit, I have it. difference of opinion there i always think that the, the word that we use is what comes in the uh, hindrance because if i use the word habit and try to create one what is the zero the impression that habit has created in in our world is habits are hard because people say you know i started that habit and it's it's very difficult to keep up i started it okay way it's very difficult to keep up the moment you said it then you start looking at the word what does that habit mean what is the distinction in my world i just change the word and reframe it i say let's do a being upgrade now it looks like really not so sexy compared to the word habit but let's just uh, give me one more minute so what is a being upgrade think of it like software so there is version 3 there is no feature of uh, so, uh, something printing on the cloud or something. people say you know everybody wants to print on the cloud and it should be a disconnected printer is said blah 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 now version 4 supports so we upgrade the software to version 4 the version 4 cannot say you know i don't have a new habit i can print on the cloud so it just is feature exists suppose that say we think of ourselves like uh, like a being upgrade what happens suddenly first you make a declaration that the new habit or whatever it is the practice or something is now part of me after this very state so it becomes your part of your new identity that means it is there is nothing to do or anything you have to practice it of course but if you don't practice it there's a feature failure that means you fix it so that you bring it back to the original which is continuing the practice so once you think of it that way none of the habits are hard because you who says now i have a habit of brushing my teeth if i say it then people will say what what is he talking about because it becomes part of you any practice that you want once it's part of you it's almost like you don't even have to say it because you will do it because it is part of you the identity becomes that right so that's how i think about it and in terms of prioritization so uh, i don't have a system in fact i am like a kid in a candy store every single day because i i always think of uh, as how do i become a possibility merchant and how do i scale with what i have who i know what i'm learning and uh, the distinctions that i'm coming up with and if you think about it i said you all have 24 hours i have 18 hours so i was not saying it in a negative way if it came across that i was thinking so the 6 hours becomes what are called vegetable hours you cannot do much with it but you could what can i do with uh, some problems challenges two things i can meditate or i can think deep what if i use the 6 hours to meditate and think deep can you imagine how many how much of an advantage for me because i am forced to if i say if the universe were not forced to do it what if i do it by choice all of a sudden in the last 7 years things started moving fast because so i slowed down but not because i want to but it's by design i think they not because i want to it's by design but i am not thinking it by choice and i build building blocks 
it means I'm not thinking of a superstructure. I'm thinking of building block. It's a relationship. It's a skill. It's a connection. It's a body of work. It's a distinction. All of them become building blocks. So when I want to build a superstructure, how easy it is for me. Is to what are the building blocks that we need? Click, 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 and the superstructure gets done. And for the outside world, it looks like he never even announced the project. What happened? Because the building blocks were always there. Now it's a question of the uh, how to assemble it. Hope that helps. Yeah, thank you, Raj. You said nicely you said. And um, how come Raj said he never been in a comfort zone? See, the thing is, uh, the comfort. See, the thing about this is. I did a research for six years about how smart people get stuck and what can they do about it. And I found that there are seven ways people get stuck. So and I can send you all those things because it's a long story. But there's one way people get stuck for their growth. It's at the edges of the comfort zone. Like there are many ways to fail. The failing at the edges of the comfort zone is where is the growth. Otherwise, there is no growth. If I fail in the middle of the center of the stage fighting, and there is no growth because you're there wherever you are. Only at the edges is any kind of growth, win or lose. It's win or learn. Only at the edge. That's why I just like to be uh, skirting on the edges. Wow. Yeah, I, question. It, yeah, I think there was um, uh, somebody, Shafat was. Yes, Winnie's Vin, Vin, Vin next. Winnie's next, then Shafat, and then Zainab. Thank you, Zain. Um, I'm really thankful for you. You know that. And Rajesh, I'm in awe. Uh, I've been listening to you. You have written, besides every, the, all the good things you said, you said you wrote a book in nine hours. So uh, that's incredible. Uh, so Rajesh, I have, a, I have a question. I I was not planning on asking. It took a lot of courage, but I'm going to ask it. I'm planning on giving a TED Talk, and I'm also planning on authoring a book. Uh, based on adversities which happen with me. So anytime when you're narrating something which is traumatic, painful, it's not easy to begin with. And I feel this huge burden that, you know, I have to do it right. I have to make an impact. Any tips you can give it to me so that I can take off, you know, that burden from my shoulders and really make an impact. Thank you. This is Vinny and I'm done talking. That is the easiest thing to answer, not because of anything else. I can ask Zane to connect us both, and I'm happy to help you with your project. How about that? Oh my God, Rajesh, I could, I'm so thankful to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really mean it with my heart. I want everybody to take note of this. His spontaneous response of giving did not even take a millisecond. In fact, as soon as when he was done, his immediate response was. It's very easy. Just reach out to Zayn and we'll connect and that's stuff. It's that he didn't have to think about giving. He didn't have to spend time about, hmm, let's see. Let me look at her profile right now. Let me see how big she is. Who is she? Do I want to spend time? He just immediately, in a millisecond, publicly declared, hey, connect me. And I will, Rajesh. Uh, just this is incredible form of giving that Rajas constantly pours out and the gems of knowledge. If all of you are not taking notes, please do it. Please do it. And everybody, you have to follow him. Please follow him and have 20 of your friends say to follow him too. Um, and, and, uh, and the next person was Shafat was uh, blinking his mic. Shafat, did it, were you clapping or did you want to ask a question? Before Shafat comes on and answers, I, I, have, I have children, as you all know, I've got three of the best kids in the world. My daughter, Zainab, my son, Zubair, and my son, Zishan. I've got to declare to them that I have another son and his name is Shafat. They never knew about him. Shafat, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Dan, and I'm always very honored. First of all, thank you so much for, for this beautiful space that you've created. Uh, it's been more than a week. Uh, that I've been anxiously waiting for this room to happen and learn from Rajesh. I mean, there were so many great words, Rajesh, but Zain shared about you with me. And I'm, I'm so naive and illiterate uh, that I didn't know much about you. I've heard about you, uh, read a few things uh, about you, but not as much as I heard from Zain. Uh, but, but because it's a busy stage, so I'll just keep myself really short. I know we're definitely going to connect later on. Uh, first of all, 
Uh, question number one. What was that catalyst in your life which helped you pivot and it helped you find your true north? Something which really, you know, puts you on the track, that external catalyst which somehow, you know, helps you align um, and, you know, calibrate with your internal system. And you were like, well, that's my way to go, one. Um, second question, you have been a journalist uh, earlier in your career. The transformation uh, from being a journalist to an author, to an entrepreneur, to a giver, and so much more. Uh, what do you think? How would you redefine Rajesh's hierarchy of needs compared to Maslow's hierarchy of needs reaching self-actualization? So just two humble questions, and thank you so much, uh, Zain, and everybody for allowing me to speak. Thank you. This is Shikwat, and I'm done. What a beautiful set of questions. Sh Shafat, you did, uh, you said it beautifully. You asked the questions, so, so much of thoughtfulness in it that um, I'm always thinking, you said, I have only two questions. One will take you two, three days, and the other one will take three, four days. And why don't you answer that kind of thing? But you said it so beautifully. It's like when I went to Kur, when I was in Kur, great, when I was, they said, you know, it's it does not rain much. It rains only two times. Once it lasts three days, the other it lasts four days. And it has to take time to think, oh, oh, oh that's, that means it rains all the time. And nothing. So, but the thoughtfulness that I'm saying is, the beauty is when I answer that question, you also know that it will help 10 other people. That's what magic is. So first is the catalyst. So uh, I wish I, I could say there was one person but uh, I would say I have been a, a recipient of generosity many, 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 many times. So uh, I'll, I'll tell one, and because uh, otherwise it takes several days. One of them is that when I was in the, uh, my college, the first uh, 11th and 12th, we call it pre-university college in India. I was in the college, and uh, at that time, uh, the most, one of the inspiring people was... Uh, the principal of the college, right? So he was amazing. So uh, I used to always be amazed that he would say if there was any teacher, physics teacher is not there, Professor G.C. Taram will walk in and say, guys, what, what was the lesson going on? He would start it. Canada teacher was not there, he would come and English teacher was not there. So any mathematics teacher was not there. And I was like, how does he even do it? Right? I was just fascinated by it. And he knew the situation that I was going through. And I got all these ranks and I got into engineering. And I was thinking, wow, well, the college fees was next to nothing because it was a, like, called an aided college. But the books were very expensive in engineering. And uh, uh, one day, the principal of my university college called me and said, hey, I know you need to buy some books. Um, so why don't you give this letter to a book house in Bangalore called Sapna Book House? And they will give you some books. I said, okay. So I said, okay. The first year at least is covered. I think I don't have to buy a lot of books. I gave, went and gave it to uh, the owner of the Sapna book house. It was a sealed letter. I don't know what was written. Even today, I don't know what is written there. So uh, the, uh, the person opened the letter and I was standing there because I was just a small kid, right? I said, sir, please sit down. And the moment he said, sit down, I knew that the letter had something, <laughs> something really amazing. So I, I said, um, so what books am I getting? He said, oh, it'll take a few hours to get all the books. I said, few hours? So I thought he has to go and pick them up. Yeah, yeah, please wait here. And then there were three or four people who bought every single book that I needed for my engineering college. Every one of them, like 185 books, he had bought for me because I, he never wanted me to struggle to buy any book. All the reference book, anything, the electronics, everything was there as a library. So now that was so overwhelming moment for me, Shafat, that I said, what can I give back? Because now it's like it's, I'm like drowning in generosity. And I said, what can I give back? What I know is how to teach. So I said, every uh, week I would go back 
during the weekends because uh, the, there was a Saturday class. I would teach for almost a year to give back everything that I know because I said this is the only way I can give. And after that, I have helped the college and everything. But that one thing left such an indelible mark on me that what would true generosity look like and what would true generosity with thoughtfulness could look like. And that would be one catalyst that uh, uh, I can uh, share. So, and uh, the second question was, uh, Shafat, what was it? I get so excited that I lose myself. The second question, Rajesh, that what is your hierarchy of name as you reach self actualization being a journalist, and then, you know, an author, an entrepreneur. And before I really wrap this question, I'd like to wrap this, that I lost my dad earlier this year, in January 24. And I was in, in a deep, you know, uh, deep depression for about 40 days, missing him and just even trying to absorb what happened. And God blessed me with Zen. And, you know, that's a miracle. Uh, the universe gives back in ways uh, in so many ways. And these are the things that I've learned, the art of giving from Zen himself. So I really want to give that shout out to everybody to, to know that. And Rajesh, back to you, uh, your journey to self-actualization and your hierarchy of needs. Oh, I'm back. So first of all, um, my, um, I'm very sorry to hear about uh, uh, your dad passing away. And I'm also glad that you found Zane and Zane found you and it's uh, much made him heaven. So the, that's why they say it's amazing what universe will bring to you and who you will, who will find you rather than you finding them. So uh, in fact, I don't have any hierarchy of needs because I'm usually really a joyful person. It will be hard for somebody to meet me in a bad mood. I hope I will never be there. So I see for me, everything is, like I said, I'm in cloud nine or cloud 10. And now sometimes I'm in cloud 11 because it's, uh, there is no, I have so many uh, things that I'm doing people, things with and I just enjoy when whoever I'm working with grows really, really fast because by God's grace, I have some thinking, I have some distinctions, I have some knowledge and the skills and some network. I can put it to use for them. And if they're doing amazing things, and there is there will be a business structure, but I'm never worried about it. Whenever I make a deal, business deal, I always think, today we're making the deal. 10 years from now, we are all meeting as families. And if we look back to this day, do we still agree that we made a fair deal? That's how I think about it. In fact, I have only three kinds of relationships. One is long term. Second one is very long term. Third one is lifetime. When people uh, have, when you have lifetime relationships with them, you are never worried about what we'll do. There are no scores, keeping scores. It's also extra work to keep scores. And I have a lifetime relationship, why? Because it's an infinite game that will span over lifetimes is how I think from the way I've been brought up. So why do anything that is uh, silly? So life becomes very, very simple. Then if you don't have any needs, then everything is like a super cool game. Hope that helps. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Uh, if there is anything I can do for you ever, I would love to do that. And uh, I'm taking a lot of my time. My sister is next sign up. So, you know, I'll just yield the mic to her. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for um, being here, Rajesh. Um, I can't say how lucky I am. And I wanted to start by saying thank you because as someone who has had the pleasure of having met you a couple times over the years, and not just that, but being able to sort of consume and read um, some of the most powerful gems you've shared on motivation and productivity over the years. It's just really wanted to say thank you for that. And, you know, I recall meeting you around 2013, so many years ago at my father's office, and it was such a gem of a moment. It was literally just about a 10 minute time span I had, but I was moved by the experience. We talked a little bit about yoga. And I remember at the end of our conversation, we said to each other, 
we're practicing yoga right now. And it was just such an amazing sort of connection. And I wondered if you could maybe elaborate either on your personal journey with yoga. I myself started in 2008 um, and it changed my life forever in a way that I think speaks to what you said earlier about, you know, when there's negative thoughts, you let them kind of peek into your mind. You don't block them out. You let them come in for just a second and kind of pass you by. And, you know, just that gem alone, what you said, Rajesh, that is something that's so powerful. And I wondered if you could elaborate on that. Thank you, Zainab. I remember our meeting very well. And you also, I'm very grateful you invited me to be on a panel on Open. So I just don't forget anything that anybody has given me because, you know, sometimes it looks like a small gift that could be a life-changing uh, gift. And I always say, life-changing gifts deserve a lifetime of gratitude. So thank you for being who you are. And I'm not surprised the apple does not fall far from the tree, isn't it? So it's you're just, I see you and then I say, of course, she has to be so nice because father is like that, right? So basically not to dilute anything about you, but it's you know, been programmed almost like pre-programmed to be so nice. And uh, it's just a joy to see you grow. And, you know, the yoga was, uh, by, I knew about yoga, but I never had thinking about when should we do it. I always think I'm busy now, kind of thing. And in 2007, at Taikon, um, Sadhguru Jaggi Vasude was speaking, and I didn't know anything about him. And he was the closing keynote speaker. I was just sitting, standing on the near the, near the door, just in case this person bores me to death, I'll just run away from here. Kind of thing. So then I was mesmerized by what he said about inner engineering. Just like outer, what is outer engineering? Outer engineering is they had bridges, homes, and all those things for the comfort. But who is doing the inner engineering, which is basically how do we construct the inner world so that you're also operating at a peak performance level in a very balanced way? I said immediately, I said, I, I want to join this course. And I went through the course, and then uh, my teacher was Namath. And I asked her a question that looks silly now. Uh, the way I constructed it, I said, Namath, if I want to practice it for the rest of my life, uh, how should how many days should I practice or some silly question like that? She looked at me like as if I am an alien. I said, oh, what, what kind of question is that? If you want to do it for the rest of you should do it every single day. So, but then she understood what I was trying to ask. And she said, so oh, what you're asking is that how long does it, how many days should you practice it so that it becomes your second day? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's okay. intelligent now. So, and she said, you know, it's very simple. You do it twice a day morning and evening, and you should have no, nothing in your uh, tummy for the night, past three, four hours. And then you should never skip. Uh, but she also said, you know, but you know, everybody says they will do it, and they will come up with an excuse. And one thing, you know, you never do to a man. He said, oh, you cannot do it. And suddenly they will want to do it. Right? So basically, no, no, I will do it. So then uh, <laughs> I didn't realize what a challenge it was, because I was also flying. So it was 2007, and I would always carry a yoga, yoga mat with me. And even if we are in the airport, I said, I made a promise to my kids. I just put the yoga mat and I'll just start doing it there. I didn't care what anybody was thinking. Earlier, they used to look at me like, oh, what is he doing? Now it's so common. Nobody really cares. In fact, people say, what kind of yoga do you do? Those kinds of things. And little did I know what impact it was having on me. Because I was just uh, doing it like a challenge, right? And then uh, suddenly people around me would say, why am I cover is so calm? What, how, what is this happening? And I'm thinking, am I, am I so calm? So, so suddenly you are in a new world, uh, yoga, meditation, and all of them. And it sh starts showing to other people. And after that, it's like a, a good drug. So that means it's like you cannot live without it. So that's uh, my journey. Thank you, Rajesh. Ooh, and uh, you know we're coming up to over two hours, and I, this room has been going it's been, uh, two hours and ten minutes. Uh, Rajesh, I respect your time and uh, the amount of time you're given. Two hours, early in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. So uh, I think we should take another ten minutes, and at nine thirty we'll close the room. If not, Rajesh, or we can close it right now if you don't have the liberty of time. I know you had another engagement. Nine thirty will be good. Okay, 9.30. So we'll close at 9.30.
Let's do quick short questions. Anybody has or anything else? Thank you so much, uh, Zambri. Slavik Dom. Namaste, Sashir Kal. And uh, thanks for creating such a wonderful space. And uh, Rajesh Bhai, thanks for so much uh, wisdom and noodles and nuggets and meat and potatoes that you're sharing. I can't, I'm trying to, but I'm not able to disagree with anything that you've said. And like, this is a power pack masterclass, you know. Thanks, Zambri. So I'm going to ask you a very simple question, very, very simple question, that success is some total of your human will, willpower, right? What is the one question that you ask yourself that nurtures your growth mindset? Because I've seen that you have done such an amazing things throughout your life, right? So what is the one thing that you ask every time when you have a closed door conversation within your mind, within your inner reality, within your inner engineering that oozes out into external engineering? And, you know, the worldview that you see. Over to you, sir. Appreciate it. What a beautiful uh, uh, question to ask about. What a question I will ask. I have a question that I'm always asking myself. What am I not seeing that I should be seeing? I'll tell you why. For you to be outstanding, you need to uh, out-execute. For you to out-execute, you have to out-think. For you to out-think, you have to out-see. The seeing has to be in high fidelity. And uh, all the aspects of life, most people don't have high fidelity seeing, which will mean that they cannot have high fidelity thinking. When you see in high fidelity, you'll see way more distinctions than what somebody else can see. That's why I always ask the question, hmm, what am I not seeing that I should be seeing? Hope that helps. So the, the reason I, I I like Rajesh is, uh, so I, I'm not much of a follower of gurus, uh, even though other gurus preach the same. Uh, but Ra why Rajesh is attractive to me is because uh, he's, he's nice, uh, but he also um, has the knack of making money. Uh, <laughs> so this is what makes it a, a sweet spot and very attractive. So uh, my question to, to Rajesh is, What's the secret to making wealth uh, by staying true to your purpose and being nice to the world? That's a really good question. So let's talk about it. See, basically, uh, see, first let's look at power. Power, I, like I said, is capacity to get things done, meaningful things done. So it could be all aspects of it. Sometimes it's an obligation. could have more power than the money. Sometimes it's the money. Sometimes you just have to have money because then you get the capacity to make meaningful things happen. So if you refuse money, of course, money will not say, oh, oh, he's refusing. I'm going to go on strike and I'm going to bar through his home and then I'll just situate myself. So you also don't refuse, you also don't be greedy. So it's it's there, you let it be there and it happens. And in all the relationships that where there is a business relationship, have a simple route. I don't believe in win-win. I always believe in they win big, I win small. So that's how I always say it. And 99% of the time, I follow it. Because sometimes people just work for me and I have to win big. And I'll make something else for them. Because I always think that I am never going to be an opportunity cost for anyone. But if I bring an opportunity, then it will be so overwhelmingly good that you know some part of it, they will be happy for me to they will be happy that I have part of it. So if I choreograph everything that I will get Ravi in a way that as a side benefit of what they're getting, I'm getting a piece of it. Sometimes they don't even know that they're giving me a piece of it because it doesn't even look, it's always a side effect. It's not as if we are doing it. It's in complete alignment with what they are doing. But also, something else happens. I pick pieces of it and assemble a superstructure. Then automatically, I bring my own value. And there's, when there is value, marketplace is happy to exchange money for it. Hope that helps. So well said, Rajesh. Um, you know, I follow a rule. It's called win, no lose. Um, I, every arrangement I do, I look at win, no lose. And But you take it a step ahead. I mean, it's incredible. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Hi everyone, this is such a great space of inspiration and uh, thank you Zain and everyone just put it up together and Rajesh, uh, I have met Rajesh for a while now but uh, it looks like we have met out, uh, each other for a while but it looks like we have known each other for years 
And the first thing uh, when I met Rajesh, uh, I'm in London. Rajesh is in uh, Silicon Valley. I, I well, this is my experience. Rajesh has got a magnetic aura. His aura is very magnetic, and uh, it, it's a very deep experience to say. And the first thing Rajesh said, I remember, I remember very well. He said, "My words creates my world." You know, and as everyone is saying, he, he just uh, kind of share words of wisdom. You know. And, and the things I've picked up from him is, I'm just sharing it here. I'm here now, so we can create a mood of wonder. So how to keep us happy, you know? So so the, uh, alongside that, and what Rajesh just said about that, and I'm kind of a, I work, we, we do business together, me and Rajesh, and he, he does live by that. He win, uh, you know, he win small, you win big. We have done, yeah, we are working on something similar alongside that. So what one question, Rajesh, I have here, you know, after listening to all of that is how do you, you know, they say we have to vibrate at a high level every day to achieve what we want. Uh, everyone wants to feel good, you know, what we're after to achieve what we want. We have to be vibrating at a high level to be the person we need to be to achieve what we want. But uh, sometimes kind of, I, I just wanted to ask your opinion about that. How do you vibrate at a high level daily or what is your typical days like, you know, how do you vibrate at that level and, and what's your thoughts about that? What Thank a you. beautiful question. Uh, I, I've never met Amal before, but I always think, sometimes, I, actually, even Ravi and I, I've never met, it's been years and years, but I know what will happen when I do meet them, it'll never feel like i never met them because some of these people are in my heart. That means if they are inside your heart, how can you just be meeting them for the first time? Isn't it? So if you think about how things happen, so people think this, the, the experience the world with five senses. They also say, I have, my heart is filled with joy. They also say, I, I feel it in my gut. But those are things that people don't talk about and they don't practice it. When I see something, I always see it from my heart. So it's a connection that I see. Do I connect? Yes or no. Have I been successful? Most of the time I'm successful. Some of the times I really thought. But once you practice seeing from your heart, there is magic. However far you are, the heart feels, but you don't listen to it. But you start practicing it, and it could be as simple as this thing, close your eyes and say, what is my heart saying? And some, if you're doing it for the first time, you'll say, what am I looking for? I don't know what, what am I looking for? What is my heart? What question is that? But you just go with it. Within a year or so, you will know what your heart is saying. So once you practice it, you almost have an unfair competitive advantage that you will feel it. And you, at that time, you say, oh, this person, I have to help. Why? There's no logic. Because I don't know the person. But your heart says you should. And you trust it. And then it looks like a game that you don't know what are the rules. Because your heart is unique to you, right? So basically, you start listening to your heart. Somebody else cannot listen to your but you can. Hope that helps someone. Excellent uh, sharing, my my uh, good uh, colleague, uh, Rajesh. I, I just want to ask you a question. In my own personal life, I've made many, many great successes. And I, I think that I'm a fairly good giver. I just want to, to understand that your alignment is, is always uh, with no this is mine, uh, there's always in all my giving no expectation of return. And uh, I've found that quite a few very successful people like myself uh, have the same alignment with no expectation ever of receiving anything back. And it seems to give us uh, a value uh, that uh, wisdom uh, or money uh, cannot buy. Uh, it gives us an inner peace, and it also gives us a drive that is um, extremely uh, divine. So I just wanted to know if that is still very much in alignment with your general thing. Adrian, and I, I don't know whether you were there in the early part of the discussion where I gave a business case for giving. So almost like, let's say you didn't, you didn't believe in this. Uh, stuff about you should give without expectation and all you really needed a business case i did make a business case which is basically you become a sophisticated pattern hunter by giving but in the giving itself is already the gift of 
the pattern recognition, pattern detection, and then capitalization of this, fine tuning of your skills to become spot and opportunity, fine tuning of your skills to take an insight to an implementation to uh, some, uh, um, some uh, impact. All those things are already there. So we don't have to even say, I give without any expectation in the giving. You already got already. So there is already an exchange of value. You become better by giving just because if you give it, if you want to give valuable help, so many things have to come together. Your listening skills have to be sharpened. Your opportunity spotting skills have to be sharpened. The bringing the right resources to the right people have to be sharpened. You are growing while giving. So there is already a gift given back to you. Hope that helps. So well said, Rajesh. Um, yes, uh, I think for all givers, the pleasure of just giving itself is a gift. Because, it, you know, if you, and the other thing it does is when you are willing to part with something, whether your time, your love, your money, whatever, when you're willing to part, you have less risk and you become better entrepreneurs because now you're willing to take that risk. So if you transform this giving into entrepreneurship, you think about it, when you start giving everything, so if I take this fork or this cup and I'm willing to give it away for free to somebody, now I've become a risk taker because I don't, uh, I'm not possessed by that materialistic thing. Good question, Adrian, and great answer, Rajesh. Thank you. Um, who was next? Uh, it was Emmanuel. Emmanuel, go ahead, please. So uh, I'm a school teacher in Texas, and uh, Rajesh, I've had the pleasure of uh, knowing him. I'm one of the thousands of people who have been uh, greatly impacted by his generosity and kindness and firsthand an incredible, incredible human being, uh, one for the history books. Uh, but one of the things I've always noticed about you, Rajesh, is you are probably the most authentic human being I have witnessed. You completely live your life in every sense of the way, your generosity and everything else. And what advice or suggestion do you have for living an authentic life? Thank you. That's a beautiful question. And Emmanuel is an amazing person. He has written a book about compassion and deludes it, breathes it. And what a joy for the children that he's teaching. It's like they got a bonus times X because with that kind of compassion, whatever he is teaching, his compassion is included. Like it's already there. If he's teaching mathematics, the compassion comes as a bonus. That's great. Thank you so much for your uh, question. Also, it's like for, for me, the authenticity is uh, is mostly a memory efficiency. So think about it. Everything is efficient if you don't have to live two lives, isn't it? So I always tell people. Sometimes I use it for my advantage. Or like somebody says. Let's say they want to pitch me an idea or something. They'll come and say, sometimes people, first time entrepreneurs, some of them are super smart. In, uh, so smart that I almost can call them over smart. So some, sometimes people will come and say, hmm, I, I got an introduction from you, for you, and some, somebody friends, is a mutual friend. I want to pitch an idea to you. And, uh, you know, all the six people I have pitched, they said, it's amazing. So I hope uh, you'll also like it. And what are they setting me up for saying it? Six of them have said, yes, then I should like it, right? So, but I see the game they're playing, but I want to tell them. Suppose if the idea is really good, then of course, everything is good. Most of the time, it's not. So how do you say it in an authentic way? So now, if I say it's not good right, directly, then immediately they will defend. So this is the sequence I use to give an example. I say, you know, I have a short circuit between my brain and my mouth. Sometimes I say things that will upset people. But if the other person is very, very smart, usually it's fine. In this case, I think it's fine. I looked at your right. I think it sucks. Now you see, I set it up brilliantly. And then uh, now if he argues, then he's not, he, he's telling himself that I'm not so smart, but he just said he's so smart. So it becomes easy. And at that time, they always come to what could we do to fix it? Then we immediately go and say, if it's fixable, and we start talking about how to fix it. So usually, it's a, there's a book by a, a professor called Professor Harry Frankman. So it's a book, it's, the title of the book is called On Truth. And he makes a business case for telling truth. Being an engineer, and that's a really brilliant book. It's a, you should all read it. It's a small book, but it's absolutely read and digest it. So uh, something to think about. All authenticity 
is a gift of capacity to yourself. If you are not authentic, you are living two, three, four, five, fifteen lives. It's too much baggage. Hope that helps. Thank you. Renu, you had a comment to make. Thank you, Zahin. I really enjoying. I'm really enjoying it. Um, Rajesh, hi from East Coast. I'm based out of Washington D.C. and I came into this room with an open mind, and I've got so much, so much to soak in. Uh, so thank you for sharing all that um, great information. I wish I I knew you when I was 19, but I don't know if you were born by then or not, but uh, that would have made my life much, much easier. You know, carrying yourself is so much humility, my goodness. Um, I, I, I'm taking away so much today. Uh, and I'm keeping keeping um, in touch with you guys on social media. So Zain, Rajesh, and everybody, whoever is in Silicon Valley, um, um, uh, any next time I visit, um, I am definitely reaching out to you guys. Um, I'm, I don't know if you know Vishal Sikha Rajesh, but uh, he's family. So I don't know. Um, I, I need to learn more about um, your um, and you know um, efforts in entrepreneurship. So. Uh, if you are in the AI space, then um, I would love for you to connect with him uh, because he's he's doing some great work there as well. Thank you so much, Jaino. Uh, it means a lot to me. After this comment, my joy jar has now gone to the whole year. I just have a joy okay. on demand option. Thank you. <laughs> yes, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, to say hello from Karnataka. Uh, fellow Karnatakan and yes there were so many fantastic takeaways from this room today and uh, how can one be so humble and yet and so giving that is really phenomenal and yes that is one thing that I have really taken away from this room today and thank you so very much for this wonderful space thank you Zen, thank you Rajesh it was a pleasure being here. Thank you. See, uh, thank you so much for uh, saying it. And I, I don't think I'm, I'm thinking I'm like by design, I'm humble or anything, but there's so much to learn. How can anybody be anything other than being, it's not like there is a choice. So there is a book by a name uh, by a professor called Professor Jeffrey Pfeffer. So uh, he wrote a book, he has wrote several books. One of the really good books is called Power. Uh, and then the second book that I really like is called Knowing Doing Gap. In the Knowing Doing Gap, Professor Pfeffer says something. In order to know your level of competence on a topic, you need to be reasonably competent. Uh, no, in order to know your level of incompetence on a topic, you need to be reasonably competent on the same topic. Which means as you learn anything, you suddenly feel, come to know how much you don't know in it. So when anytime you go dig deeper, you say, oh, oh, there's like an ocean of things. Oh, there's another ocean. Oh, there's another ocean of things. So Absolutely. if that is the case, then there's no, you are always in a beginner's mind. Wow. You're always on a beginner's mind. That's a sentence to close this room at. This has been an incredible room, two and a half hours. You all have agreed, you must agree that this probably is one of the cherished rooms that you've ever been in. Uh, with Rajesh Shetty. Uh, Rajesh, I'm so, um, how do I thank you? And it goes to a line from a legendary movie called To Serve With Love, where Lulu sings and she says, if I could pull the stars and moons from the sky, I could do it. But all I can say is to serve with, uh, to lo with love to serve. With love to you, Rajesh. And uh, everybody in the room, um, unmute yourself. And do a real, real clap for Rajesh. Everybody unmute and just do a real clap. Uh, this, has been, this has been an incredible room, incredible room. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you, Rajesh. And everybody that wants to get in touch with Rajesh, reach out to him. He's a giver. He'll call you back. If you want me to connect with you with him, reach out to me. Please follow Rajesh. And follow everybody in the room. Just follow them. And I will do the Zainism room every week now and bring other speakers like Rajesh. Rajesh will join us occasionally too when available. Thank you. I'm humbled to everybody who came in at 7 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock each time, and 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock India time or Pakistan time. 
from all over the world, from England, everybody came in. I'm humbled. I owe you one. Please, in the next 90 days, ask me for something that I can do for you. In the next 90 days, ask me that something I can do for you. Connect you with somebody, help you and send some advice, or do something for you as a favor. Reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll close this room. Thank you, Rajesh, again. Thank you, everybody Thank you, that has Thank been you, around so long. Thank you.